so I wanted to do a quick video about uh, some power control logic that I like to use. First of all, the problem. Pulsing generators. So what I like to use is a bit of logic that's basically a form of latching, latching uh, power control. Where basically instead of going on and off at a fixed value, we'll have a separate on versus off value. So if you watch the screen here, right now it's not filling the core up, but as soon as it gets down to, I forget what it's set at, it's like 10% or 10 million or something, it will start feeding power until it gets up to a high value. So say this is hooked up to a reactor. So instead of running your reactor all the time, potentially wasting power. Oh, there it goes. So 10 million. So now it's going to fill up till it gets to about... Once again, I forget what I set the threshold to, but... So basically, like I said, say this were connected to a reactor instead of running the reactor all the time. Or pulsing it on and off as it hits some arbitrary threshold. This would basically run it in bursts. It would run it for a while, get the core filled up, then shut it down and let it coast on the power that you have. So this is fairly easy to do in XNet. Basically, it just takes two logic channels. And it's hard to see because of uh, XNet not having enough decimal places there. Or not decimal places, but wide enough to show it. But basically, here is the low value of 10 million. So as soon as it goes under this value, it's going to trigger. And then it's going to stay on until it goes over this value. And the way it works is... So say, once it hits here... So this value is still true. It's under 30 million. But this channel requires the white signal to be active. Now this this channel requires the white signal to be active but once it's active as long as it's under this value it will stay active because it will provide the white channel. Here the low trigger can be active anytime and provides white channel. So basically this one will hit which it's about to hit so the low trigger is about to provide white channel there we go. Now the low chant trigger is no longer true, but the high trigger is true and is keeping the white channel locked until the high channel is no longer active, or no, the high trigger is no longer true, and then it will go off until the low trigger hits again. So XNet is a very simple and reliable way of doing it. I've also got it implemented here with integrated dynamics. It is quite a bit more complicated, especially if you want to do it in pure integrated dynamics, which was a good exercise, but I would actually recommend not to do it in pure integrated dynamics because integrated dynamics will try to detect cir uh, circular references. So use this delayer here to keep it from realizing it's referencing itself. But this delayer a lot of times if you restart the server or restart a single player game, it tries to go back over that logic again and breaks basically. So load back in here. So if we load back in here, this is now broken. So basically in order to get this back jump started, I need to give it a true value in the delayer and then I can switch it back to the actual variable card it needs. So what I would recommend if you are going to go with this setup is to use a redstone writer and reader with a piece of redstone in the middle to act as that buffer so that it doesn't realize it's referencing itself. And then it should be a lot more stable. But basically, there's the low trigger. So... Here's our low value of 10 million, the high value of 30 million. So here's the low trigger saying, is it less than the 10 million? 
and the high trigger if it's less than 30 million. The or here is basically if the low trigger hits or variable six, which gets the value of this delayer. And the delayer is an and of high trigger or variable 12, which is the or. So basically that's the self-reference there. It's basically an or into an and with the or referencing the output of the and. So, like I said, if I was going to use this in a permanent setup, I would use just a redstone writer and reader to eliminate this and make it more stable. There, this is the more stable version that does not use the delayer. It instead uses a redstone reader and writer as a proxy. This will perfectly survive a server reboot or a single player exit and restart. Uses a few less variable cards too. So basically there's the 10 million, the 30 million thresholds, the stored energy, the less than 30 million, less than 10 million. I believe, so this is an ore of, I believe it's, let's see, 17 and 21. So 17 is less than the low threshold and 21 or what was that? Uh, 17 and 20 and 20 was 19 and 18, which 19 is the red. So basically if this redstone is true and it's less than 30 million, then turn the redstone on. Then this is, is that true or is it lower than the low threshold? And it works perfectly. So here is the same logic set up using advanced re or automated redstone. So basically I've got a sensor that is reading this energy pylon. And this is running this gate right here. So basically here's our constant for 10 million, our constant for 30 million. Here's the input from the core. Here is, so this is the high trigger, the low trigger. So basically, get the lines to show up a little better there. So the low trigger hits, it hits this OR gate, which hits the AND. The AND is hit by the OR gate and the high trigger, so then the AND turns on and self feeds the OR gate. So it stays on until this is no longer true, and then it gets output. This works pretty well too. It was just had to figure out how to use this mod a bit in order to get it to work, but it works. So here is using RF tools, monitors and logic gates. And it's basically the exact same setup, except uh, I'm using percentages instead of absolute values. But so here's the low trigger, the high trigger, the low trigger goes into an OR gate, basically, because it's doing A and C. So A is on, A and C is on, and C is on. So that's an OR gate going over to an AND gate, which is A and B, which is these two. So OR into AND, and then it's turning on the cell. So that's basically RF tools logic. A couple days after I recorded this the first time, I realized that these have an extra, this keep option right here. So I came up with this, the same setup, but using only one logic gate. So here's the low threshold, the high threshold. So it's saying if just the high threshold is on, keep the previous signal. And if both of them are on, turn it on. So right now, just the high thresholds on and it's keeping the previous signal of on. So now it's off. Now it's under the high threshold again, but it was previously off. So it stays off. Now in a minute here, when it goes under 25%, then suddenly they're both on. So then it turns it on. And 
as soon as power starts going in, it's no longer under the low threshold, so then it's just the high threshold, thus keeping the on signal from when they were both on. In just a second here, that will happen. So now it's on, and now it's locked on because of this right here. So there's when both thresholds are hit, and there's when just the high threshold is. And then as soon as it goes off, it goes off. You can make it a lot more compact as well by facing the two RF monitors toward the logic gate directly right there. So it's actually one of the more compact options. And the final one here, which is another very reliable way, and it's also one of the simplest ways, is using RF tools controls. Simple in that you need no logic gates. A quick and dirty way of doing it is basically just checking the RF. Is it higher than the high threshold? Or, yeah. Is it greater than the high threshold? If so, turn off the power. If not, is it lower than the low threshold? If it is, turn on the power. And basically the power will stay on or stay off until the other one is true. So that's a very simple and reliable way of doing it. So, I just figured I'd do a quick video showing this kind of latching logic for power control, and this could be used for anything. You could use it on, like, keeping a certain amount of items. You could use it on fluid. For instance, I've used the integrated dynamics method here to pulse a uh, immersive petroleum refinery so that it would basically run until it was full, then empty out completely, then run until it was full again. So, those are a few ways of doing it. Some nice power logic. So, see you guys later.